Hey everybody, some gadget guy here, somegadgetguy.com, and we're gonna be talking a little mobile computing today. Now, my go-to Android solution is still a Nexus 7. In fact, this is the 2012 edition Nexus 7, and now that it's finally gotten upgraded to KitKat, this is great. But there are times, both at home and when I'm out on a job site, that I could use something a little larger than my handy little seven inch tablet. And lately, I've been tooling around with a Microsoft Surface 2, which gets me up to a 10 inch screen, and thankfully has a proper widescreen aspect ratio. But I don't know, folks, I think we can go bigger. Yeah, stepping up to a 12.3 inch screen, my little Lenovo twist. This is feeling pretty good. Windows hybrids fulfilling some of that touch screen computing with slightly larger screen sizes. But you know, folks, I think we can go bigger. I think we can go a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. How about a 20 inch tablet to uh, feast your eyes on? Okay, so maybe I'm being a little silly with this comparison between something like the Lenovo Flex 20 and some of our other tablet solutions. But as you can see, this functions perfectly well as a standalone unit. And uh, you can see that it's not connected to any wires or cables powering it. It's got its own built-in uh, battery power supply, which makes it a really interesting solution for the kind of mobile computing that we might be doing out on job sites, uh, in school or educational environments, and then also just what we like to use our computers for at home. Walking around the hardware on the Lenovo Flex 20, you're of course greeted by the 20 inch display, jumps out and greets you. Uh, this is a 1600 by 900 resolution display. They call it HD plus, but it's not actually 1080p. It's higher than 720p, but lower than 1080p. Um, this is sort of the resolution that we would normally find on 20 inch monitors though. There is nothing on this side of the Lenovo Flex 20. And on the opposite side, is where you'll find uh, your ports, your headphone headset jack, excuse me, this is a headset, and it uses a TRRS connection, two USB 3 ports, and then the charge port for the Lenovo. On top of the Flex 20, we've got the power button, volume up and down buttons, and then this handy little lock switch, which locks the screen orientation in place. That way, if you're moving it around, it won't keep reorienting on you. That's helpful, especially if you're maybe considering using this for any kind of business solution or running any kind of like presentation off of it. It would be easier just to make sure that that stays in place. And then on the back of the Lenovo, I just wanted to point out, we do have these little rubber stoppers here. Um, they're, they're curved around the back edge the bottom edge of the uh, Flex 20, which is helpful for when you're propping this thing up in more of a desktop style mode. And then we also have feet at the top for when you're laying this on a on a flat tabletop surface. We'll talk about why you would want to do that a little bit more. And then on the back, this seems to be sort of the MO for Lenovo now is offering multiple modes of how a computer product can be used. And you've seen it with the, my twist and the Lenovo Yoga, where the screen, screens can swivel around to make tablet modes or stand modes. And this is no exception. There is a little stand which folds out and it's actually pretty stiff because it can support the whole weight of the screen when you're propping it up in more of a desktop mode. And then you can fold it all the way back in to either use the Lenovo Flex 20 on a flat surface, or if you're wanting to, for some reason, use this as a bit more of a tablet-like solution. Again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using the Lenovo Flex 20 like I'm holding it now, um, but you can if you want to, especially if you're one of those people who think our normal 10-inch tablets just aren't heavy enough to get a good workout with. I mean, do you even lift, bruh? But that is actually a pretty decent weight for if you're carting it around or if you need to use it in different locations. Sort of a semi-mobile solution. And as it's a Lenovo, it definitely feels like it's built solid enough to handle some of those bumps and bruises that you might accrue moving a big slab of glass like this to and from work and home. Uh, I know this definitely feels far more rugged than some of the monitors, for example, that I've had to take with me on job sites and on set. And I definitely feel more confident about this surviving uh, a prolonged shoot than I would say, you know, like my old gaming monitor, for example. Running down the rest of the specs, I've already mentioned that this is a Core i3 processor, specifically running a 1.7 gigahertz Core i3 and utilizing Intel HD graphics, I believe the 4400 series uh, GPU built into this, which means it should be pretty decent for HD video playback. There's four gigabytes of RAM on board and this does feature Wi-Fi, uh, 802.11 BG and N support, no AC support, and as you saw from the rest of my tour around it, there's no ethernet jack for this as well. This is going to be primarily a wireless solution, although you could use a USB to ethernet solution if you wanted to plug in a cable connection, but then you'd lose one of the two USB ports that you have access to. And just because I think it's cool, the two speakers on the bottom are Dolby certified. They're not the loudest speakers I've ever encountered, but they definitely have a very full, very rich sound. Not the bassiest, but lots of very accurate detail, especially in the mid-range and the high end. So as you're watching movies or as you're listening to 
music, you're gonna have a pretty decent experience off of the speakers built into this thing. And I kinda love that rotation works on the Flex 20. For those of you who want to use Windows 8, in portrait mode like this. That, and it's really fun holding this thing and shaking it around. I really hope I'm freaking you guys out a little bit. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna drop it. I'm not gonna drop it. I'm pretty good. And rounding out the rest of our hardware tour, there is a hard hardware windows button, which can always take you back to your home screen or to the last app that you were running and a webcam and mic built into the top of the unit for Skype and other video calling features. You can fire up Google Plus on this. It is a full fledged windows computer. And now as a minor gripe, even just from this first impressions, I think Lenovo starting to get a little happy with all of the additional pieces of software that they include on this, but they do have one app, which is really interesting and that's Aura. And we're gonna switch to a different camera angle to show off Aura because it's a custom piece of Lenovo software built specifically for using this as a tabletop gaming solution. When I pulled this out of the box, it was Windows 8. So I did have to spend some time updating to Windows 8.1, the little Core i3 and the 500 gigabyte hard drive on board. It took a little over an hour to go through all of the setup procedure to launch Windows 8.1, but now we have 8.1 and it's a pretty smooth and fluid interface. I mean, the nice thing about this UI is that it's designed for low power ARM tablets. So when you actually throw a little muscle, even a Core i3, which isn't the beefiest processor, but when you throw a little muscle behind it, it's it's a very smooth and fluid experience moving uh, throughout the UI, even pulling up some of our little side menus and some of our, oh, I don't have anything up to do multitasking and the little uh, customi uh, customization things that we can do in Windows 8. And it's just sort of a nice platform for doing the sort of touch table computing. It feels a lot like what Microsoft was going for when they debuted the original Surface. You know, when the Surface was a big table and you could touch and move things around and you could interact with different uh, settings and features and get really into how all of this functions. This is kind of what the Idea Center, the, the Flex 20 is getting at when you use the, uh, the Flex 20 flat as like a tabletop surface as opposed to upright like a uh, like a computer. And even though you can see both of my hands sort of, you know, manipulating stuff here, it's kind of easy, especially in the way that I'm shooting this, to lose sight of the fact that this is a 20 inch screen, a 20 inch slab of glass diagonal. And just for comparison's sake, you know, here's my LG G2, which is a 5.2 inch screen. And here's my Nexus 7, which is a, uh, which is a seven inch screen. And you can just see how, how just, completely dwarfed they are by this huge tablet. And Lenovo claims up to three hours of battery life uh, using this thing when it's not plugged in. And that's somewhat accurate. It kind of depends what you're doing. If you're gaming on this thing, it's gonna drain really fast. One of the major value adds is this Aura app that I wanna fire up, which is a custom interface for a series of Lenovo services that you can you can interact with mostly for gaming social gaming you know putting this thing out there and having a group of people uh crowd around it to participate with different apps and different games and other services so they've got like a music app that you can fire up and you'll see uh just the different songs and this nice little sort of spin wheel uh interface for the different kind of songs that are already on here and uh what kind of music you can interact with ditto video if we fire up star trek this bar scene. And we can increase the size of it, decrease the size of it, move it around, kind of put it over here. And it feels, it feels, this is, this is cool because it has that sort of uh, minority report feel to it. Only you don't have to wear funky gloves to move things around. Let me pause that. Um, let's see. And kind of just throw that off to the side for education stuff. This looks like more like little kids type apps. I, I'd love to see a proper education platform for this kind of interface, like moving into even more like a grade school or high school type education services. And they have a Lenovo app shop. I haven't installed it just yet, but you can get even more services that fit into this little spin wheel with our photo. Uh, you can see uh, I did a how not to use the Lenovo uh, Flex in this, uh, this uh, how not to, you shouldn't ever take, you know, a giant tablet into a bathroom to do a selfie, that, that should be self-evident. Just kind of shove that off to the side too. And then games. And so they have, it comes with a series of games on board and these games interact with a set, uh, a set of accessories 
um, that come with the Lenovo specifically for these these apps that are built in. And, and that's uh, what we're gonna take a look at next because that's really, really cool. Okay, so included with the Flex 20 is a wireless keyboard and mouse. We're just gonna pull this out here and some batteries for both of those accessories there, which is pretty great. So this mouse looks a lot more normal than some of the previous Lenovo mice that I've used in the past. It's just a nice little click scroll wheel and two button mouse. Very simple action there. There's nothing super fancy about this guy, but I like it better than some of the other experiments that they've done in the past with these ARC style, like mobile mice, for example. Um, I, this was a cool idea. I just didn't really love the execution on it. Uh, ditto this keyboard. It's a nice clicky action. There's solid feel to the keys. Uh, they're powered off of AA and AAA batteries. And it is really nice that considering who we're targeting uh, this kit at, the fact that these come with wireless accessories is really fun. Though I do think it's kind of a bummer that this kit is powered by a little uh, a wireless transmitter. These are not Bluetooth accessories. They're just uh, sort of a stock, probably 2.4 gig wireless uh, setup, which means that there, the two USB ports on the Flex 20, one of them is going to be used uh, to power your wireless keyboard and mouse. Now, a keyboard and a mouse would be cool enough, but the Flex 20 also comes with a series of gaming uh, peripherals and accessories. We have a trio of different accessories, which is really cool. So first we have a wireless die, which I haven't had a chance to play with the app on that yet, but you've got a little sort of like transmitter and, and this little cradle which connects in. And then this guy, which you can use to play games with uh, in rolling a dice. And that's, that's just kind of cool. I mean, that's like smart. Then we have these guys, little suction cup for dual stick arcade style shooter and and mobile apps. And then we have a pair of air hockey paddles, um, which we'll show you right now because I, I did have a chance to fire that up. Okay, so we've got Aura back up. Let's fire up a game and let's get Lenovo air hockey up and running. Let's see how long this, it's firing up pretty quickly. Oh yeah, it's right in. Okay, so we're gonna hit start. There we go. We're gonna do a classic, because I'm old school like that. I don't know if I'm touching in the right place on any of this or if it's loading. Oh, you select it. Oh, I see. Okay, so you select one and then we come over here to play. I'm gonna set this guy here this guy here, and boom. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'm losing to myself. I'm the best worst air hockey game player ever. And move that back over there. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of cool. Like the idea that you could have um, probably up to four players playing uh, on this one screen is actually kind of sweet. So here, let's go ahead and hit pause and we're gonna go back to menu and we can take these off and we can hit back and exit. And now I'm in a uh, the Raider Company game, which is a sort of a dual stick arcade shooter and zombies or mummies, excuse me, are gonna come after me. And it uses these little joysticks to control your little guy on screen. I'm doing this upside down so that I can get a better camera angle for you guys, so I'm not sure how good I'll be able to, ah, it's a mummy! I totally capped him with my shotgun because I'm awesome like that. I don't know how, I'll, how well I'll be able to continue playing. Again, performance is pretty good, but we do see the occasional little stutter, stutter jaggy as, a, as it goes through, kinda, let's see, I just hit spikes, that's probably bad. So more mummies. Come on, get away. <laughs> this is a really cute game. Um, I'm just having a really hard time controlling it upside down and get those. So yeah, that's um, that's fun stuff. I mean, it's uh, it's an interesting experience. And 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 these little sort of tactile controllers definitely add a, a very fun element to, to gameplay. They're basically suction cups with little capacitive rings. And so wherever the, the ring touches the screen uh, is where your little character guy goes. I tried playing uh, Halo with them. Unfortunately, the way that the Halo dual thumbstick on-screen controls work, these don't register properly for Halo, but uh, I'm hoping that we see some other apps for Lenovo to come out, and uh, that could be really fun.
And while we'll be doing, I'll be doing a few more videos just about different usage scenarios and different function. And, and I'm not going to get into benchmarking or anything hardcore on this because, you know, it's a Core i3 and it's not really designed for that kind of hardcore usage. But because I mentioned it, I thought I'd pull it up that this thing does a, a perfectly respectable job of playing apps built for the Windows 8 environment, um, which is really cool. So like here's Microsoft Studios. We're going to fire up just a little Spartan Assault. It's going through all of these just fine. I mean, it, it, especially considering how some of the apps in Aura could lag just a little bit. It seems to load Windows 8 specific apps really well. Um, here, let's get into, go ahead and select this. We're just gonna jump into a little gameplay. I'm not really gonna be able to play very well because like I said, I'm, oh no, I, I do wanna do that. So we'll select this uh, because I'm sort of doing this upside down and backwards and we're gonna start. Yep, thumbsticks are ready to go. This is so weird doing this backwards. And see, I mean, you're getting fluid gameplay. I'm totally going to die like right away. Yeah, I mean, gameplay is super fluid. Nothing's really catching or lagging. The Core i3 is doing its gig. Uh, just fine. Even even something which is which is a little graphics intensive. This causes my Surface 2 to run really hot. Um, the the Flex 20 is is doing a fine job of uh, of playing through. And then there's one other thing that I wanted to show just because I was impressed with the performance on this. If you watch my speaker review of the Flex 20, you've already seen me play this video file. And I'm not sure a lot of you guys understand why it is that I choose this video file for for my test but we're gonna fire this up. So this is over a USB 3 thumb drive. So for my speaker review test, I use a clip of the film Night of the Living Dead. Now I pulled this clip off of archive.org where they've got a 17, I think it's like a 17 gigabyte file, which is a, a Blu-ray rip, a super high quality version of Night of the Living Dead. It's totally free, totally legal, public domain, definitely go check it out. But occasionally you run into uh, situations where some devices don't play this video file very well. I just took a piece of it, but this little, it's like a two or three minute clip of the film and it's it's a 400 megabyte file just for this uh, these couple minutes and I'm really impressed that the flex 20 with the core i3 is able to play this as smoothly as it does hey I mean praying's for church huh come on I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well, there's not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? I mean, that's great performance. The 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 new Intel HD graphics chip, that 4000 series GPU, which is bolted onto the side of the Core i3, does a really good job of playing up even high quality HD video. This video file causes my Lenovo Twist to stutter a little bit because it's on the older IV Bridge chipset. This is great performance. I'm really impressed with this. And um, the speakers are actually really nice. I mean, you couldn't really hear from that that brief example when I fired it up here, but definitely check out my speaker review. And, and I think you'll be impressed with the speakers on this thing too, especially considering the price point. That Dolby certification actually does seem to mean something because the playback off of the Flex 20 is, is very, very crisp, very articulate. It's not the bassiest sound you'll ever hear, but it's very accurate and uh, it, I, I think it's pleasant. I think you'll like it. And with all the fun Windows 8 stuff, I mean, you can do things like fire up the camera. We'll fire this camera up. Let's see if we can move it over to one side. So we wanna keep that going. And then we'll also pull up like email. So you can have your little video window going while you're reading through some email and kind of move that around. I mean, this is all really, really nice. And, and especially considering the target demo for a product like this, this type of split screen functionality, I think will come in really, really handy. And just because I mentioned it, here's the little Lenovo U camera. Um, it's just a different uh, software interface for the front facing camera on the uh, Flex 20. It's taken a sec to fire up again. I'm having to, oh, there we go. And so, yeah, there's the camera that's recording this right now. So that's really exciting. Uh, and then you can switch back and forth between video and photos. And then you have little options to do, uh, you know, just different effects and and uh, different editing uh, to do uh, sort of a, this, this is a, a, a good look 
uh, filter <laughs> to improve the quality of what you shoot. Or if you want, you can also do specific controls to things like brightness control. It's a nice little touch, especially uh, especially considering, ah, oh, it's my giant hand. Um, uh, especially considering uh, how stark the Microsoft app is for the camera. Here, we'll actually show you that real quick. Uh, when you fire up the camera on Windows 8, there we go. When you fire up the camera on Windows 8, it's super basic to the point of being almost not functional. And yes, we'll allow the camera. And then you touch the screen and it takes a picture. And that's about it. So it's nice that Lenovo is looking at that usage with a different uh, camera experience so that you can control more of the photo output. If you want to do something like record yourself off of the front facing camera, you have some better controls to do it with this app right here. Once you start playing with it, you come up with all kinds of novel solutions that you just wouldn't have considered had you not had the capabilities and the opportunities that this kind of desktop mobility will provide you. I and mean, just the battery life alone, I can play with this thing for a good two hours on Wi Fi before it starts to power down on me. And I have been on job sites where this kind of mobility would have come in handy. My normal solution for that kind of job scenario is to lug a laptop, a mixer, and a desktop screen or a monitor out to some studio or location to get my audio work done. This would shave two products off of that list in one handy form factor. I don't know, this carves out a really interesting market niche, especially for those of you who are shopping some kind of all-in-one, maybe an iMac. This is something which offers some unique potential, some unique opportunities that normally aren't afforded us when we're shopping a desktop style computer. And at the time this video was shot, the Flex 20 was starting at $740, which when you think about it, for this kind of mid-range, entry-level, consumer-grade experience, is pretty decent. A touchscreen all-in-one PC solution that can be powered off of its own internal battery for a couple hours, that's not a bad buy. I love seeing companies embracing this new UI and aesthetic that Microsoft is trying to push forward with Windows 8. Yes, I know there are gonna be some legacy concerns, but when you really see what you can do and start incorporating touchscreen solutions and mobile solutions and battery-powered solutions on our old school traditional desktops, I think it's pretty clear to see why the old desktop and laptop market as we understood it in the past needs to die if we're gonna be getting cooler, cooler gadgets moving into the future. And so I've already posted a speaker test on the Lenovo Flex 20, you can find that on my channel. I'm gonna be doing some other tests, like I wanna maybe do some, some hangout style videos off of the front facing camera for, so we can see what this will look like in video conferencing and video calls. Plus I'm gonna be exploring even more gaming opportunities on the Lenovo, especially with all the fun accessories that they include in the box. I think that's just a smart move because it instantly gets you thinking about all of the new things and all of the new ways you can use your your computer. And of course, I'll definitely want to take a look at this in a work scenario. So I'll be throwing some of my audio editing software at this, some of my video editing software. This isn't really geared towards high-end workstation grade computing. But for those of you who want to like cut up vacation photos and videos, this could also be a really handy solution for that kind of workflow as well. I'm really excited to be playing with this. I'm going to be spending a couple weeks with it. I'll definitely report all my thoughts back here on some gadget guy. And uh, as always, folks, thanks for watching, and I will catch you all on the next video.